Hi there, welcome back to my studio and my YouTube channel. I'm Diane Evans and I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Now if you're new to my channel, please make sure that you do subscribe below so that you get notifications every time that I upload a new video. Hit that bell and you'll hear a ding when I do upload those videos. Today I'm wanting to show you an amazing technique that's actually a blast from the past but it's 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 an oldie but it's a go it's a goldie it really is it's um it's amazing it's called the bubble technique now i had completely forgotten about this technique but all you need is a bit of water you need some soap you need some reinkers and we're using this get, um, coming home stamp set, but I'll just take that out of the way. So you need this, you need um, some re-inkers, you need some shimmery white paper. Now you don't need to use the shimmery white paper, but it's probably about the best because it shows up so beautifully on there. And then you also need a glass of some sort. I use a wine glass because it's it's narrower up at the top and that works quite well. I need a, uh, a sheet that I can put down. I just use my um, sheets that I get from the back of my designer series paper. I leave the plastic on some of them and then I can use it for some of this messy stamping and messy techniques. And you need a straw. So let's go and I'm going to show you how this all goes together. I'm just going to cover up my work surface. I have my shimmery white paper, but I want to show you some of these different cards or different um, bases that I've got that I've made with this, this bubble technique. This is using, using um, Magenta Madness. Now, isn't that just gorgeous? Think of the beautiful different types of backgrounds that you can use. This is using Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay, so you can add different colors. This one's using cinnamon cider, granny apple green, and smoky slate. So you get a real marbly look in that sort of stuff. But I was wanting to make a Halloween card. And I wanted, I, I, I had paper, um, the designer series paper, but I wanted something totally, totally different. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing with this. Now, my wine glass, I have a bit of water in there. I am using something a little bit different is I'm going to use my Memento reinker. And I want it quite dark and that usually it only takes about 11 drops but I'm kind of an impatient person and this one might be quite dark so I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm bringing in my dish soap. It only takes a drop. You can see I don't get me in a kitchen because I muck up everything because of the way I do it. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to blow. And what you do is catch the bubbles onto your shimmery white paper. And I tend to just move mine around a bit. And at this point, I can just go with these bubbles that are already on here. Isn't that amazing? Like, what a beautiful, beautiful background, right? And I think I'll just get a little bit more. We did this last night on my Zoom class, and it was it was so much fun. Now, the one thing that you want to do is once this is done, you want to move it completely away from anything that's your re-inker is going to get on. Let me just bring down another piece here so that I can do that. But if you can see that, and I don't know if you can actually see it in the video itself, but with the shimmery white, it's absolutely, it, it's, it's just amazing. So I'm actually bringing in for this card, and I'll show you the card that I'm making. This is the card. It's an easel card. And it steps up like this. 
And on the inside, I used the um, paper that was done with the smoky slate. And then on these pieces, I used the ones that were done with the memento. So I'm just going to bring in my trimmer. I'm just going to cut those pieces. I happen to know that I need a piece that's two and three quarters. Another piece that's an inch. Probably should have trimmed that down to the four inches because they're all by four inches. And we'll just bring in this piece here as well. And they can only be, they only need to be like four inches long. Or, yeah, long. So we'll just trim that off. Now, if you want to be really particular, I guess you could get everything all lined up where the bubbles are continuous, but that wasn't important to me. What was important was getting this background to go with my card. And both, all cards are all totally different, so. All right, so we have that all ready. And then, with your the basic black, your basic black is cut at five and a half by eight and a half, and it's scored at four and a quarter. Now, what you want to do is you want to line this up, and this is what's going to give us the side parts. We're going to line this up at one and a quarter. And we're going to go from the center here and cut down, and then I'm going to go over to this side over here and line this up at four or one and a quarter as well. So make sure I've got that. I'm going to. It's better to come from the middle down. And what this is going to do is this is giving us these flaps. And this is how I'm getting the easel as well. Now, this is at, we also have to make sure that we score this part to give us the easel. So that is at two and an eighth. This is four and a quarter to here. So half of that is two and an eighth. And then I'm just going to bring my scoring blade down. And I'm just going to score back in there and that's going to give me my easel part of my card. So we've got it like this. This is going to score in here. I'm going to come in with my bone folder. That's going to come right back. And then I just want to make sure that this is good and scored as well. So there's lots of different ways. I've shown other card variations on this, but what I want this, I want this piece to be down, lie down completely flat with the base of my card. So like that. And then we're gonna put this other side down as well. Oops, we're out of our stamp and seal. Well, I've got another one here. I just have to get it going. And let's just put that down there and line that up. Now remember, we had cut these two pieces here, so they are going to go on this outer part here. You can see I've got this one a lot darker. I kind of like it darker, but everyone's different, so. Let's just put this on here. And this piece is going to go on there. Now, all these measurements are going to be on a link that's down below to my blog post. This is part of the Stampin' Friends or Blogging Friends blog that I'm involved with. And then this piece is the one done with the smoky slate. So I'm just going to put that in the middle. just like so so we've got all the elements of the card that are done so then to show you how I did the other parts to the card was I did use this coming home bundle now the beauty of this is um, with every stamp set that's sold with this coming home stamp set uh, Stampin' Up! is giving four dollars towards um, different uh, there 
it, they're donating it to a charity and it has all to do with adoption, infertility, uh, that sort of stuff. So remember when you do purchase this stamp set that you are also donating to those charities as well. All right. So, and if you do buy them together, you do save the 10%. So I've gone in and I've already stamped different elements from there and I've colored it so the video wouldn't take as long. And the colors that I used with it were the Granny Apple Green in the blend. I also used Light and Dark Highland Heather. I used some Light Black and also the Pumpkin Pie. Now on these ones, these ones are a little bit brighter than on here. And what I had done was I'd gone in and I had used, and I'll show you how I did that. I just went ahead and I just wanted to kind of mute down that color a bit. So I went in with my light smoky slate and just sort of colored over top of it just to give it more of a grayed off look on there. All right, so let's see. Now on this piece here, it's going to go on here. I didn't like how it was sharp around the corners there, so I brought in my uh, trio punch and I just went and cut, um, I just mounted off the corners there. I'm not rounding off the corners at the bottom, I just want it rounded off at the top. Okay, so on here, and I have all these different elements on here, I'm just gonna bring in my silicone mat and I came in with my stamp and seal I'm just going to put this guy over here. And you know, I wanted some bats, and I found some bats that were on this stamp set, and there were little ones there. So I've got them already put onto a block, and I'm just going to bring in my memento. And I'm just going to see how those are. They're upside down. There we go. So I'm just gonna have those kind of go there off to the side. Okay, and then we're gonna come in here and I think we're going to use a bunch of little black dimensionals. I'll bring in my take your pick tool. It's so much easier to work with this. I am. Um, I love these black dimensionals because when you use a black cardstock or a dark cardstock, you don't see the dimensionals behind on the card. So they look really good. Let's just take that off. We're just gonna put him down there, about there. About there, I think. And I think I probably also just went in here and just trimmed off this bottom part here. So I didn't want the bottom of the trunk of that tree to show. Okay, so that's that part. And then I also went and I put one tree over here. So again, we're gonna go in with the dimensionals. You see, it kind of gives just a different look onto the thing, but what a great technique. I'm dying to use, um, I colored those other ones in those different colors because I've got another idea what another card I want to do. Not a Halloween card, but definitely a card um, using that bubble technique on the back. Okay, so now we're going to put this guy here. See how dark or light it is? I think it actually is better, so I'm going to actually go in. I already did it with the, um, the roof on here just want to tone down, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, the purple uh, or the Highland Heather, I found it was just a little too, with the whole theme of the card, I thought it was better if I had actually just toned it down a little bit. So let's just take this as well. This works really, really well with um, a blend that's almost... Um, almost out like when it's and then I'm just also going in oops I don't mean to do that on top of that there we go there there okay and 
I don't know what color Volkswagen I'm going to put on here. I might put a purple, and I've also got a green one that's done, so I'm not sure exactly what, what I'm going to do on that. So let's go, and we're going to put this guy here. I want to take one of these trees. I've cut out several of these trees. So I'm going to go ahead with my dimensionals and put those on as well. Put some of these on there. Should probably use the bigger dimensionals, but these come in packs of four. And I find I use the big ones up to begin with faster than I do the little ones. So that's why we're going to play with the little ones to begin with here. So this is going to go here. I'm going to have a tree up about there. So let's go put this one on first and then I'm going to kind of stick that tree behind. By using your take your pick tool, it's so much easier to get all those off. Now I'm going to oops, take this off of here as well. And let's go there. That'll be good. Then I'm also going to come in with another one of these and I think I'll only, I'll just put this on with a bit of the stamp and seal. Kind of just goes off a bit here because it's popped up quite a bit. And then let's put this little house behind. And probably should put it up with dimensionals as well. This house can go right about there. So I don't need the dimensionals up at the top. I'm just going to put some stamp and seal up at the top because they're already popped up up there. But I'm going to need some dimensionals on the bottom. So I'll just go and put some dimensionals onto the bottom. Whoops, we got quite a few there. Okay. Not sure how that happened, but that's okay. And I think I'll put one about there as well. All right. Let's bring that in about like so. And we can also go in and put one of these trees in the front as well. You know, I've never really been much of a Halloween type person, but this stamp set, I can't stop making cards with this cute set. It's so versatile. It really, really is. Okay, so now that's going to go up on this part here. So let's go ahead and attach that there. I'm just going to bring this down like this. centered and now we need something to pop that up now I wanted to put happy Halloween or trick-or-treat or anything like that and I was having problems with images like the teeny tiny greetings were too small so this festive corners I used this trick-or-treat this trick one there to um, stamp it so let me just go and stamp that So the trick or treat, I'm just going to go in with my memento. We're just going to put that up there. And then we're just going to cut that out. There we go. So I just brought in my snips and just doing the very quick um, 
fussy cut. Remember to move just the paper. And I just, there we go, like that. We're going to go in again and put dimensionals on here as well. Now, because I have white and it's almost on white, I'm going to bring in my little white dimensionals and use those as well. This is such a fun card to make. Like I say, that bubble technique, once you start on it, you're going to find that you're just going to keep doing it over and over and over again. It just adds so much to um, your cards. They really, really do. There we go. Now, the idea is now, do I put a purple Volkswagen or a green Volkswagen? Hmm. Well, I know one thing I'm going to do before I put decide that. I'm going to go in with my um, little bats again. I'm going to go up here. And then what I also had was I had that spare piece of the bubble. And this is actually from the other bubble. I'm not sure where piece went off up here but I wanted to go in and I wanted to have a moon so the best way that I thought I could do that is to bring in a punch and I know the punches are um, discontinued this one but anyways I'm going to punch out just punch out a circle you know, and it's supposed to be a full moon, I guess, on Hello, Hello's Ween. Um, but I'm just going to go in with my So Saffron blend. And I'm just going to actually put it a bit, it might be too big of a moon. I'm not sure. But I'm just going to put a moon right up about there. And I'm actually just going to stick it right on with the seal. Because I don't want there to be dimension with the moon. So let's put that behind the tree there. There we go. Now, like I say, I've got to decide what color bug, Volkswagen bug, I'm going to put on there. That or purple. You know what, my other one has um, green on it, so I think I'm going to do a purple one. I'm just going to come in with a bigger dimensional. Pop that whole thing up. And pop that up so that that... There we go. And there's my card. So I hope you like that. Like I say, it's given you the idea of what to do with the bubble technique. Um, it's such a great technique. It really, really is. Um, but yeah, so if you like that or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to make a comment below. Give me the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way um, you do get notified right away. And um, I hope that I've inspired you. And also, if you do live in Canada and you don't have a demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. I give away tutorials each and every month. And um, depending, uh, there's a brand new tutorial coming out uh, next month that uses actually um, this stamp set so that there's a really neat idea where you get different ideas of how to use this stamp set. Um, but use this to, uh, host code and I will send you a tutorial for free as my token of appreciation. But anyways, thanks so much. I really appreciate you stopping by. Bye for now.